All right, apparently the Noah Hawley version of Star Trek is not dead. Uh, we know this from Hawley himself. He uh, spoke to Variety and then bounding into comics uh, read it for us. <laughs> yeah, the article goes into details of his other projects, uh, most notably his uh, fourth season of uh, Fargo. Uh, hopefully that can ride the ship. I mean, Fargo's a great series. Uh, the, the, but the, the third one, even though I enjoyed a lot of it, uh, the performances are really great and a lot of the presentation and structure of the series is all there and it's good. I just think it was weak, uh, compared to the first two and, uh, hopefully the fourth one can, uh, knock it out of the park again. Uh, they, they've had plenty of time. There's been a lot of delays and most notably, of course, our current lockdown and all that. Uh, so, so that'll be interesting too. So, you know, it's a Holly interview, but he does touch on Star Trek and reveals that it's not dead. It was the suspicions that it was. Everything concerning Star Trek uh, on film has been shelved officially uh, by their new head of uh, Paramount. Uh, 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 I guess Paramount Films. I guess she is. Anyway, Emma Watts. She came in and announced that and that uh, we're retooling it and looking what kind of Star Trek do we want to do. And that sounded more in line, actually, with what Holly talks about his film. He flat out said it's not going to be uh, Captain Kirk or Picard. It's, it's going to be a, a new thing. Uh, but it will be set in the original uh, canon, not the J.J. Uh, Abrams created one uh, from those films. Uh, or the other uh, uh, timeline, which you have to conclude that it doesn't work any other way of Star Trek Discovery. And I'll throw Picard in that as well. <laughs> Those don't count. <laughs> so, at the time, it seemed to imply that the, his film would be the Star Trek IV film that they had been trying to get off the ground uh, with Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto and all that. And, uh, but no, that's not the, the case here. Uh, and, and actually, this is something that I think would work much better for a new TV series. I kind of wish he was doing that. I guess he wants to do the film and, you know, the idea of a big movie and all that is more enticing to him. Um, he took a shot with Lucy in the Sky and they, that, that bombed. And so now he's got another shot at a, uh, you know, a franchise that is in a lot of trouble and has been badly beaten down by what uh, Alex Kurtzman has done to it, uh, even though that's for the, uh, for, well, television, but really the streaming service. Um, but it's, you know, it's the brand of Star Trek. And the movies, uh, the second movie destroyed the J.J. Abrams uh, movies. I, I don't know what they were doing. I guess they just didn't have any ideas. And they Robert Orsi was the only one who even understood Star Trek somewhat, but then he used his... 911 uh, uh, conspiracy theories and weave that into the story. If you think about it, uh, Khan was Osama bin Laden, so there you, you can figure that out. <laughs> but even the Aloha idea of bringing Khan back, and it was stupid to begin with, they just didn't have anything. They had one good movie in them, and that was it. So the third one is sort of okay, but it's, it's a pale shadow compared to the first one. And so it was done, it was over. Uh, they wanted to do a fourth one. They were going to tie it in to the first movie with uh, time travel where Kirk apparently meets his father, George Kirk, played by Chris Hemsworth. And that was the deal. But, uh, well, they didn't have the money. Their investors uh, 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 backed out because of the, the, the bombs, the other two. And they figured, well, this is over. Isn't this a sinking ship? Um, and they couldn't cough up the money to pay uh Chris Pine, who is now a big star, and of course Chris Hemsworth, you know Thor, he's a big star, and so uh, he's worth more, and they they couldn't pay uh, their rate, so they walked, and that was the end of that, and and so that's that. Plus, there's the problem that Simon Pegg mentioned uh, since uh, since the, the the death of Anton Yelchin, it's kind of a a gloomy situation for that cast, you know, I mean, the, the freak accident that uh, killed him is just, you know, and then, you know, well, we're going to come back and then they got to come up with some storyline that, well, I guess their Chekhov died or uh, was sent somewhere else. They're not going to recast him. So I think, sadly, that was a great cast. That was one of the really best parts of, of those films. And it's sad uh, that, you know, they can't do any more. Uh, but I think that's it. I don't think you'll see that anymore. As for Star Trek going forward, which it should go forward, 
Um, I would rather see Noah Hawley, uh, like do a pilot for a new series. I don't know if he'd want to show run it like he did with Fargo and all that, but, but what have you gets it off the ground and introduce this new cast and stuff and then show, yeah, it, it's in that canon, but it's in a future beyond the next generation era. And, uh, we go with that and you, you get back to what Star Trek is. And it's just in this other time, there's other elements there, there's more advancement, things that they can do, that sort of thing you, you put in there. But uh, that's about it. Now, the rumors of where the his film idea got rejected because it was deemed too trekky, uh, apparently there was a rumor that Paramount officials were uh, upset because it shared similarities to the Orville, <laughs> which the Orville uh, beats them every time when it comes to... You know, just the very uh, nature of Star Trek uh, is repeated in this parody. And um, you can be mad about it all you want, but you should uh, uh, suck that up and learn the lesson from that. And uh, the Star Trek brand could beat Orville, but not in its current state. And the reason uh, Orville, as good as it is, I have to conclude that its success is more on the fact that Star Trek people have nowhere else to go. And so uh, Orville is supposed to be this parody, but it really isn't. It's just, it's Star Trek. <laughs> that's what it is. And that's what, um, uh, you know, uh, Seth MacFarlane is clearly the guy they should have uh, hired to uh, show run their new Star Trek series. It would have been a much better a marriage than uh, what uh, Kurtzman and Bad Robot has brought them. So uh, that's unfortunate. But uh, so apparently there will be this film as to what effect it has on the franchise. Or I, I don't know. I, I films I've seen as more like tributes to the Star Trek more than it, uh, an entity unto itself. Whereas Star Trek's real home is in episodic television. Uh, another thing, there were rumors about this. And I kind of think it's kind of odd now that Holly is, is brought in because of what he did with Fargo, where Fargo each season it's 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 the town of fargo and they are connected but it's a different era within fargo and it's new characters and all that and you could do apply that to just about anything I mean, american horror story did it too where you know star trek could have this series where each season is this you know different casting you could do prequel stories you could do the the, the pike stories and stuff the way it should have been uh, even with Anson Mount, who I liked, I, I think they, I, I could work. I could uh, watch that cast. Uh, but it, it, and then next season, it's something else, and it's something in the distant future, and stuff like that. And you could get top talent who uh, you, you know have busy schedules and whatnot, but they could fit that in for you know eight episodes, ten episodes, or whatever it would be. And uh, there you go, you know, and that would be an interesting take, but. I think if Star Trek were healthy, you could have that, and you could also just have a basic Star Trek series that really, I you know, should be set in an era beyond Next Generation. Uh, Prequels, in and of itself, a Pike series, I was intrigued by. Uh, There were some stories about the early Romulan War they could have done. That's interesting somewhat, but at this point, they keep fumbling the ball so badly on that I think their best bet is to go in deeper into the future for Star Trek and uh, come up with a new cast. And uh, but they still, I mean, it's still this problem of you've got to have somebody who knows what they're doing and cannot repeat things that have already been uh, handled in previous episodes and series uh, and that sort of thing, which uh, happens all the time in Discovery, and they do it very, very bad. And Picard, the whole Picard series was going over material that Next Generation had already covered and did better typically in one episode. So, no more of that. <laughs> but it's probably going to get it. But anyway, so it's not really Star Trek 4. It's Star Trek Holly at this point as to what that is. Apparently they still have some hope that Star Trek 4 could happen with that uh, with the J.J. Uh, Abrams crew, or the Kelvin timeline if you will. And but I I'm rather dubious on that considering how Simon Pegg put it, uh, but I you know I suppose uh, 
if they can come up with the pay for Chris Pine, they can have him come back and be Captain Kirk in that time travel story. Uh, but at this point, I think that the ship has really warped out <laughs> on that one. And um, uh, Holly's project is probably the one to look forward to as possibly happening. Um, but uh, but it's, it's just Star Trek remains in a really bad place. But uh, Emma Watts is correct in uh, kind of uh, reassessing this and figuring out how they want to really reboot it you know, in a lot of ways. And uh, so... Uh, there's always the, the, the promise of some savior is going to come in and do it, and now that's her for the time being. <laughs> so we'll see. Most of them let us down, but uh, hopefully uh, she can get a team together that actually respects and understands Star Trek and can work on something. And if that includes Holly, well, okay, he's a he's an interesting and great talent. I've seen him do some good stuff, and so maybe maybe uh, uh, he can be the guy to uh, give us some good Star Trek. All right. Thank you for watching and listening. So why not like and subscribe and check out that link description below. That'll take you to my mini stores and have plenty of goodies for you. You know, hats, mugs, stickers, posters, all that goody, goody stuff. Plus, you can head over to IndiePlanet.com and pick up a copy of my comic book, Night Night. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Plus, you can also catch my podcast, Mr. Nelson Show, over at RadioMisfits.com. And you can also watch my videos on my channel at BitChute. That's the Mr. Nelson channel on BitChute.com.